welcome. Let's take a look at maximizing the volume of a box. What we want to do is find the volume of the largest open box that can be made from a square piece of cardboard measuring 24 inches on each side. So as we're thinking about accomplishing this, let's take a look or closer look at the problem and make sure we understand what this is conveying. So we have a piece of cardboard that is 24 inches on each side. It is a square. So we know that each side is 24 inches. And what we want to do is we want to make an open box out of this which means we're going to have to cut corners from the cardboard in order to fold up and create the sides of the box. So let's go ahead and represent those corners here that we're going to have to cut out so that we can create a box. And so what will happen is we'll end up folding along these lines to make the base of the box and then these shaded areas will fold up to make the edges of the box. So our box will end up looking something like this. Okay, when we're done. Okay, so we want to make this box, the volume, as large as possible. So we made these cuts so that we could create the box, but we don't know how big those cuts are. And, and basically that's what we need to find out is how big are these cuts so that my box is as big as possible. So we're going to let X be the length of each cut. So we're defining our variable here and we'll create our function in a moment. So for each of these cuts, these are length x. So when I come over here to my box, um, we need to label the dimensions of the box. Now notice that these pieces that we're folding up, they will have a length of x. So we know that the height of our box is x. Now the base of our box is represented by this inner square. And so if I look at my box um, at one of the sides, let's say this top side, the entire length was 24 inches but I've made two cuts of length x. So what remains for this side on the base of our box is 24 minus 2x inches. And that's also true for these vertical sides, so 24 minus 2x. So when I look at my box here, I have sides in the, on the base that are 24 minus 2x long. Okay, so we're focusing on volume here. So I, I think we understand the problem. I think we understand the, the dimensions of the box, um, both on the cardboard uh, flat, laying flat, and on the assembled box. So let's go ahead and think about creating a function to represent the volume, which is what we are wanting to um, maximize. So volume typically of a rectangular solid like this box is length times width times height. Well, in our case, um, our, our length, if you will, is 24 minus 2x, and our width is 24 minus 2x, and our height is h. 
So the volume of our box can be represented by 24 minus 2x times 24 minus 2x times x. Or more simply, uh, 24 minus 2x squared times x. Now, let's think about the domain of this box. What are the possible cuts that we could make? So if x is equal to the length of each cut, the smallest cut would be not to cut at all. So 0 less than or equal to our cut. Now remember, we're having to cut from both sides of the cardboard sheet. So the biggest cut would be the cut where x would meet exactly in the middle. And so if the, the length of the side of the cardboard is 24 inches, if these cuts were to meet exactly in the middle, then that would be 12 inches a 12 inch cut. So our domain here is um, 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 12. Okay, so now we want to maximize this. So let's go ahead and find our derivative. So v prime of x is equal to, um, we'll be using the product rule and the chain rule, on our first factor, we'll have 2 times 24 minus 2x to the first power, mm -hmm. then taking the derivative inside of that uh, squared factor gives us a negative 2. So derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, which would be 1, times our first factor, which is 24 minus 2x squared. Now to clean this up, I notice that I have a common factor of 24 minus 2x in both of my terms. So v prime of x is equal to 24 minus 2x times now I've factored out the 24 minus 2x from my first term, and so I'm left with a 2 times a negative 2 times an x, so that'll give us negative 4x. Plus, and now I took one of the factors of 24 minus 2x, but there were two of them. So I'm going to have another fact, uh, a remaining factor of 24 minus 2x. So v prime of x is equal to 24 minus 2x, um, and then inside my brackets here I'll have 24 minus 6x. So that's a pretty simplified form of our uh, derivative. So now we can start considering where this might equal zero or be undefined in order to find our critical points. So the first source is of critical points would be where my derivative is, un is equal to zero. And the second source would be where my derivative does not exist. And for this second source, we can see that we have a nice polynomial. There are no uh, values of x for which the derivative does not exist. So turning back to the first source, um, we could have a critical point where 20, 24 minus 2x equals 0, or where 24 minus 6x equals 0. So following those two, we would have 24 equals 2x, if I add 2x to both sides of the equation, and then 12 equals x if I divide both sides of the equation by 2. For the second, 
Uh, if I add 6x to both sides of the equation, I get 24 equals 6x. And then if I divide by 6, I get x equals 4. So critical points, I have two of them. I have x equals 12 and x equals 4. Now we need to know uh, whether we have maximized um, our volume. And notice that uh, one of our critical points corresponds to the endpoint of our domain. So we can use um, our strategies for finding absolute extrema. Um, notice uh, we're maximizing on an interval and we have a critical point that lies within that interval. So all that is necessary is for us to look at the volume at the endpoints of the interval, as well as the volume for any critical points that lie within the interval. So there's three volumes we need to check. And recall our volume function is here. Um, so our volume at zero, at x equals zero, our cut is equal to zero, will be 24 minus two times zero squared times zero, and that is equal to zero. So the volume of the box would be zero cubic inches. Now, uh, our critical point when x is equal to four, uh, we would have, um, 24 minus 2 times 4 squared times 4 as our volume. So inside the parentheses, we would have 24 minus 8, which is 16. 16 squared would give us 256 times 4 would give us 1024. And then lastly, uh, volume at 12, we would have 24 minus 2 times 12 squared times 12. Well, inside these parentheses, 2 times 12 is 24. We would have 24 minus 24, or 0 squared. And 0 times 12 would be 0. So what we can say, and the question asked us, find the volume of the largest open box. So the, the volume of the largest open box is 1,024. Uh, our units are inches, so cubic inches when um, squares of size 4 inches by 4 inches are cut from the corners of the cardboard. I hope you find this helpful. Have a good day.